One topic that is always important to me when writing applications is the development productivity so that we can keep in our development flow and keep the turnaround time short. And I've been um, creating a content on tools such as Watch and Deploy and showing how to do that on, for example, Docker containers running on, um, in application servers. But there is now another approach that I want to show you if you're deploying applications to Liberty specifically that can even improve your development productivity a little bit more. So if we have an enterprise project that uses a Java enterprise and MicroProfile, for example, uh, which we're going to deploy on Liberty, we can build this using, for example, this Maven thin WAR file approach and deploy it to, uh, to a Docker container by building a Docker image. And what I'm going to show you now for local development um, instead is how to do that using the Maven Liberty plugin. So typically, I'm not the biggest fan of um, Maven plugins because usually they add a lot of bloat and XML that could be well done in a simpler uh, way typically. But this um, plugin comes with a nice killer feature of a development mode um, that has been added in version 3 that is already available in a milestone version. So you can um, get that and try it out already. And now um, this plugin also has a little bit, um, has been improved a little bit more on the convention over configuration. So it's easier to include uh, with less XML, which I think is a good thing. So we can build this um, locally and I'll show you how this, uh, how this development mode works here and what it provides us. So what I'm going to show you, so this is now an, a plain enterprise project and I will use a, um, and add a minimalistic Liberty configuration with a server configuration that we add under uh, source main. So there is this convention that this uh, tool assumes that it resides on the source main Liberty config and then uh, server XML. But don't worry, it's a very, very small like, uh, type of XML. So we have a server and what I'm going to add is some features here and that are available uh, on the server. So for example, what we could add is well, just um, Java EE 8 and then, you know, some micro profile, for example, that's the easiest way. Or if we even want to optimize that a little bit further and say, well, I'm not going to use all of um, Java E here, but only let's say CDI and JAXRS. So that makes the startup time even uh, a little bit faster. And let's say I want to have micro profile config as well. So let's add this for now. And that's already sufficient. So that's a, now an optimized version of, uh, of my server, just a boiled down um, experience. And now I can start um, this by using um, this Maven approach of um, Maven package um, and then Liberty um, colon dev for the development mode of the Liberty plugin. So what that is going to do, well, package is going to package your um, application into the WAR file as usual and the Liberty development mode that now starts up um, Liberty in a special mode where, well, you can actually uh, hot change something in your application. So what this mode is going to do, it's listening for file changes for well, specific type of files, Java source files, for example, but also configuration. And then it will reapply, uh, um, recompile and then apply these to the running process and do that in a way without rebuilding everything. So, for example, it only listens for specific file changes on a single Java file and then only recompiles that file and swaps it um, in, in the running Liberty. So what we can do then, for example, is to connect to our application using curl, for example, localhost 9080 application is called Liberty. And let's say we have some greetings. So that says hello, greetings slash hello. And it says, well, hello for us. So there is a hello resource with some greetings available. And that, of course, we now uh, can change under the hood. So. Let's change some code, a very basic change on the static um, uh, Java string constant. And what it's going to do, well, it uh, sees our change and very quickly we'll just update uh, the server. And then we can well, see the change, try it out and continue coding. So this is a much faster way of applying these changes rather than rebuilding uh, the whole application. Um, so what this plugin also does, um, besides just listening for, for Java changes, so this was a very basic one, just having a constant, uh, but of course you can keep uh, coding in your overall um, Java IDE experience. Or 
um, what you can also do changing configuration files. For example, I use microprofile config in this project. So we have a greeting, a greeting property that is being used in this config uh, resource. So we can, for example, go to slash config and get uh, this uh, configuration here that can be changed um, as well. And then, of course, this change is also being picked up and you can literally, well, reapply that change very, very quickly. So that works for this type of configuration. It um, The Liberty plugin knows about microprofile config and knows about um, uh, about this location as well, where that config com uh, comes from. So what to listen to. What we can also do, and that's uh, getting interesting, we can actually change the server configuration under the hood while the server is still up and running. So we don't even have to restart Liberty if we add, let's say, a feature. So if I want to have, let's say, microprofile metrics, uh, for example, I'm going to add the feature of microprofile metrics in version 2.0. So then Liberty is going to install that feature for us and then um, restarting that application so we still can access our app now, but also we can um, access the metrics uh, resource. So that is available under slash metrics out of the box. And what Liberty does, it assumes that you want to access this actually via um, HTTPS and then you have to authenticate um, because it's a protected resource. But well, we can do this, but if we don't uh, really care about this in our project here, we can actually add to make this easier. It's microprofile metrics, set the authentication here to false. And again, that's a change that we can just uh, reapply um, here locally. And then you can um, invoke this endpoint and query all the metrics, for example, here. So that is a change that is um, only done in the runtime, in the running server. But of course, if we want to add something like the metrics API, the Java API to use, that's also possible. You can do that by making a change, a new dependency um, in the Palm XML here. So even without starting that, uh, restarting that process. So that can just keep up and running and we add some microprofile metrics API and then um, we can use that in, for example, adding, um, let's say the declarative approach of annotating something with add counted and a name and so on and so forth, you get the idea. So this can be done and reapplied and changed uh, also without a compilation error now um, since we just added the dependency and that works while the server keeps um, running and is, is up and running as well. So that is very easy for us since we can literally make all the changes that we would do during development and the Liberty um, uh, development phase just picks it up and reapplies it and we don't have to restart the server. Although restarting the server in Liberty is also very quickly, but it's much faster to wait, you know, less than a second rather than a few seconds until we make the overall turnaround of rebuilding our application and restarting the server from scratch. What um, else we can do is that this um, mode actually can execute the tests for us. So what this um, development mode does, if we hit enter, it will um, run and execute our unit tests and integration tests for us. So you see that the integration test now fails because it checks for a few more things that I was assuming. Um, this uses the Maven convention of unit tests and integration tests with the uh, same default uh, that we know as Java developers. And now I have some tests here, for example, well, that's a unit test that's boring on a code level uh, unit test here. And I have a smoke integration test or system test that connects to my application from the outside using the same HTTP resources and just uh, checks for, well, my greetings like hello, hi, and config and so on. So it connects in this case um, to localhost 9080 and checks for um, these queries. Um, so, of course, that fails now with that configuration file um, being changed. So what I will do, I just uh, change this back uh, to the original one, or I could also fix my test. And then, well, this is being re um, reapplied, so I can already uh, see the change uh, here. And if I hit enter, then I, it will reapply these tests, rerun the unit tests and integration tests in the same way as, of course, I can do that um, using my IDE. So that is just an approach that is much faster 
during development the approach of having um, integration or system tests that connect to an already running environment. So we don't have a test lifecycle where it just fires up an embedded container or a, a Docker container or fires up an application that just has to start each and every time rather than we have um, idempotent tests that connect to an environment that is already up and running, especially if we can quickly um, redeploy and change that environment uh, in our development mode. Uh, so that is one thing that is available. If you're even more brave and want to change uh, and rerun the tests immediately, um, what you can do, you can run the Liberty Dev mode with dash D hot tests for um, Im um, immediately rerunning your test when something changes. So you can have a look at the documentation um, on the uh, GitHub repo and on the documentation for the individual uh, goals. So the dev goal, for example, with all these uh, parameters that you can add for running, well, integration tests, unit tests, and all that. And then it will just run your tests um, automatically. And the nice thing is once, well, depending on what ch uh, change you make, once you change something in the production code, for example, it will, of course, change your application and re-execute the tests. Or if you only change something in the test scope, it, of course, only has to rerun um, the tests that you uh, that you did. So now um, we can access that application again and we just well see that the tests have been um, executed. So if, if something changes here uh, in you know, resources, uh, for example, we make a, a code change here, then well, at first um, the unit tests now uh, will fail or I expect them to fail uh, since that is um, um, uh, already failing at this point um, or uh, then the integration tests uh, will run as well in the same way like of course we can restart them um, using the IDE approaches. So that is just an approach of developing faster locally by making a change and immediately applying them with minimal waiting time whatsoever. What is also quite helpful is that this um, approach, the development mode, comes with the um, default debug port uh, being enabled. So under uh, debug port 7777 out of the box, we can actually connect uh, to our application. Um, for example, by connecting our IDE and attaching it to the running Java process. So what we can do then, now we can connect um, to this and we can set breakpoints. So if we debug this locally, let's say we want to access our hello resource. Now the uh, breakpoint is being captured and we well, can debug uh, and inspect our running application. So this is very easy to set up. We simply have to connect uh, to the running port and that's already there. So this is also something uh, that helps a lot while developing locally. So these are a few examples that you can do uh, with this uh, new Liberty development mode. Actually, uh, all the features that I showed you have been part uh, of Liberty for a long time by reapplying uh, changes, for example. Uh, but this new mode makes it even easier for developers to put all that together and wrap it into a nice developer experience where I can add this um, required configuration with a minimal overhead um, of XML code and add it to your application and by, by doing so really in, increase your development experience by minimizing, minimizing the turnaround times. So I believe that's, um, that's a nice approach that makes, makes the development experience more joyful. So that's um, a feature you can already try it um, out. Um, I'll provide the links um, on my blog and please feel free to uh, provide feedback and to put in issues um, in case uh, you run into something. So that's still a milestone. Um, a version for now. Um, the uh, version 3 will be out there soon. And yeah, happy to hear about your experiences, uh, literally. So let me know um, what are your experiences with writing enterprise applications. And I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching.